when the spheres that were formed from hair follicle stem cells in culture were injected in the skin of mice, they formed neurons. We confirmed that these cells in the skin were neurons by their expression of beta-3 tubulin. We then wanted to see if the cultured hair follicle stem cells could be used to regenerate a severed nerve. The sciatic nerve in mice was severed and the cultured hair follicle stem cells were injected into the area of the severed nerve. After a period of about two months, the nerve rejoined and in the area of rejoining, we could see the green fluorescent protein expressing hair follicle stem cells. Upon further analysis, we found that the hair follicle stem cells had mostly differentiated into Schwann cells, which form myelin sheaths in the area where the nerve was rejoined. We confirmed that the GFP expressing cells were Schwann cells by their expression of GFAP. It appears that these newly formed Schwann cells produced myelin sheaths which surrounded axons, perhaps letting the axons grow and rejoin the severed nerve. We then looked at the different types of cells formed by the hair follicle stem cells in the rejoining sciatic nerve. Unlike cultured hair follicle stem cells, where neurons were most prominent, in the rejoining nerve, most of the hair follicle stem cells differentiated into swan cells. We then wanted to test the function of the rejoined nerve and asked whether electrical stimulation could cause the gastrocnemius muscle to twitch, the gastrocnemius muscle, muscle being innervated by the sciatic nerve. We found, indeed, electrical stimulation of the rejoined nerve caused the gastrocnemius muscle to contract. In this movie, we electrically stimulated the untreated severed nerve and found that the gastrocnemius muscle did not contract. In this movie, we electrically stimulated the nerve that had been transplanted with hair follicle stem cells and allowed to rejoin. We can see that the electrical stimulation caused the gastrocnemius muscle to contract, demonstrating that the rejoined nerve had regained its function. We quantified the degree of contraction by the gastrocnemius muscle after elect electrical stimulation. We can see that both four weeks after transplant and eight weeks after transplantation, the gastrocnemius muscle contracted much more than the controls where the nerve remained severed and was not treated with hair follicle stem cells. The stars mean statistically significant data. We then asked if the hair follicle stem cells could rejoin the severed spinal cord. We severed the spinal cord of mice in the thoracic region and then inject the severed region with hair follicle stem cells. We found that the spinal cord rejoined and in the rejoined area we could see the GFP expressing hair follicle stem cells. In this movie we see a mouse in which the spinal cord was severed but was not treated with hair follicle stem cells. The mouse has lost the fun the function of its rear legs. In this movie, we see a mouse in which the hair follicle stem cells were injected into the severed spinal cord. We can see that the mouse has mostly regained function in its rear legs. Conclusion. Hair follicle stem cells can differentiate into many types of cells, both found in the hair follicle and not found in the hair follicle. Importantly, these types of cells include 
neurons, and glial cells, which can be very useful for regenerative medicine. We have found that the transplanted hair follicle stem cells can functionally rejoin the severed peripheral nerve in mice. Transplanted hair follicle stem cells can also functionally rejoin the severed spinal cord in mice. These data suggest that hair follicle stem cells have potential to treat peripheral nerve and spinal cord injuries. In the future, we will see if hair follicle stem cells can treat degenerative processes in the brain, such as Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's disease.